I'm George Rewa, um, in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. My grandparents are, are the, uh, the oldest generation that, that came to Canada, and they came to Canada in uh, 1949. Uh, however, my parents actually uh, preceded them to Canada by about a year, coming over to Canada and working in Saskatchewan for a year until they, they got on their feet uh, in Canada. Most certainly. Uh, my father was uh, Alexa Rewa, uh, my mother Tatiana, uh, my grandfather Stefan Kilimnik, and my grandmother Larissa Kilimnik. I think it, it, it all boils down to the turbulence in Eastern Europe uh, at the time of, of World War II. Uh, my grandparents were uh, the, the older generation at that time, they were well established in, in Ukraine. My grandfather was teaching at a teacher's college in, uh, in Nizhen, which is near Chernihiv. My grandmother was teaching in the same area. Uh, my mother was uh, starting medical school in, uh, in Kiev, and uh, my father was, uh, well, he didn't know my mother at that time, but he was in, uh, in eastern uh, Ukraine. With the turbulence of World War II, with all the uh, uh, difficulties that occurred at that time, um, they felt that uh, that was not the place that they wanted to spend the, the rest of their life and they moved from Ukraine to, uh, uh, to a displaced persons camp in, uh, in Austria and from, from Austria came over to Canada. Obviously this was before my time. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it was the most uh, pleasant uh, part of their life, uh, but it was a decision that they had, uh, had made. Uh, my grandfather especially was, uh, was used to having to move to better his uh, position in life. So although he was born in Vinica, which is in central Ukraine, uh, he went to university initially in, in Crimea and Krim in Feodosia and then did advanced degrees in, uh, in Kharkiv and then took extra courses through the University of Moscow. So this was Soviet Ukraine. So he was able to move to where he had to move to for, for career purposes. And uh, I, I think that the idea that uh, if he had to move uh, from Ukraine to another location, that was something that was not uh, entirely foreign to him. Everybody came by boat. Everybody came by boat and they're all Pier 21 people. Uh, the, uh, my parents were, came as, as workers and they had to work, that's where they were initially in, uh, in Saskatchewan for a couple of years uh, and they worked there and then after that period of time they were able to uh, sponsor my grandparents. I believe they were in Kenora on their way, finishing their, their time in Kenora on their way to Toronto. But I, I could be wrong about that. Wow. Everybody came to Toronto. Okay. Everybody came to Toronto. My grandparents never uh, lived in Saskatchewan. They came to Toronto, uh, and initially they they lived in uh, in rental housing, uh, and by about 1950 or 51, they bought a house on Crawford uh, Street in Toronto, and, and they went from there. My mother was going to university in Germany. My father was going to university in Germany. Uh, they met, they married. Well, they were uh, initially my, my grandparents, my, my grandmother was from, a, from this, we're talking about the grandparents on yes. my mother's side. The grandparents uh, were from, uh, the grandmother was from Kremenitz mm -hmm. and the, the grandfather was from Vinica. Mm -hmm. uh, but their, their working life, they spent in the Chernihiv region, uh, but to get to the working life, they they um, they lived in um, in Crimea and Feodosia, and they lived in Kharkiv, and they moved through the system as as much as as, as young people do today. Mm -hmm. uh, they go to school in one place or another, and and they improve their education and move through the system. Yeah, you have to remember that uh, my grandfather died in in 1963. 
uh, that was a different time than the time that we're living in now. And at that time, we were very much in the Cold War. Uh, we were very much in the Eisenhower and early Kennedy years in the United States. And uh, there was a lot of distrust with the, uh, with the Soviet Union. There was a lot of uncertainty, uh, uh, discreditation of, of, of people by the Soviet Union and, and vice versa. Um, and in fact, many of the, um, uh, the ties uh, to Ukraine were, were, were severed because people did not want to either put their family in Ukraine at risk uh, or the family in Ukraine did not wish to communicate or alternatively people in Canada were uncomfortable uh, writing letters to the, uh, to the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was a, uh, it wasn't a thing that was talked about a, a whole lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that even uh, my, my father died in 1970, so just before he died, he got a hold of his brothers just to tell him that it was, uh, he was going to die. If we, if we go back on my, uh, on my mother's side, my uh, grandfather uh, was one of four kids, mm -hmm. and the, the four kids, uh, they all had uh, their kids, and, uh, and uh, there was a, a loose tie with, with that family. Mm -hmm. uh, they, most of them remained in, in Vinica. Uh, so when Ukraine got its independence in uh, uh, in uh, 91, um, uh, one of the, uh, my mother's generation from another branch of the family, Ivan Kilim, that came to Canada and he spent six weeks here looking to see what Canada's like. Mm -hmm. And from yet another generation down removed, uh, Ludmila Kowalska came to, uh, to Canada and uh, I think in 1995 or 1996, and she has lived here, and she's a member of the Cathedra. I see. So she's, she's Canadian. From that part, uh, that, that connection has stayed. From uh, my uh, grandmother's uh, side, um, again, they were an upwardly striving group, um, and it was a turbulent time, so um, I think that one, uh, one of her siblings stayed in, in Vinica, one moved to Kharkiv, and uh, I can't remember what happened to the, to the last one. Mm -hmm. um, from my, my father's side, we don't have as much of a, a connection, uh, but they came from um, a town in, in, eastern, uh, in eastern Ukraine called Sumy. Oh, yes. Uh, and, uh, over the years, they have they have moved around, uh, mm -hmm. and we've uh, again. This is all after the after mm -hmm. independence. So before independence, there really wasn't much of a, uh, yeah. a connection. But after independence, we've uh, we've spoken with them. We've uh, and, and they live in in Poltava and near near Kiev now, uh, as well as in Moldova. Uh -huh. So they have they have moved around over the years. Yes, uh, we've been in, um, uh, on my mother's side, we have been in, uh, in Vinica. Um, and in Vinica, the, the, there's still the, the family compound uh, because there's so many members of the family there. Um, the, uh, um, there are, so we met up with, with the people there and we were able to, uh, to see the school named after my grandfather in the street and so forth. And in, um, uh, we recently were in, not recently, maybe I guess two years ago, uh, we went to Baturin, which is uh, a uh, restored uh, town um, near Chernihil. Um, and, uh, and there we had the opportunity of driving through the area where my, my grandparents lived. However, th there was no family there. That was, mm -hmm. uh, that was just a place that they lived and worked. Mm -hmm. And of course, we've met with the uh, my father's family uh, on a number of occasions in in Poltava. They brought the mementos that were important to them 
from their from their past, uh, the mementos that uh, were very personal, the mementos that uh, that meant a lot to them, uh, and mementos that during their by and large during their lifetime they they weren't comfortable sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, they were mementos for themselves to remember what they had been and what they had done. By the time my grandfather came to Canada, uh, he was 60 years of age. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, you know, a re relatively senior age to start a life. Uh, and many of the, the contacts that he had, either in, uh, in Toronto or, or New York or Paris or, or London or Argentina, uh, could provide him with the, the sources that he could use for his, uh, for his work. That's something that he brought with him, just like the one that I showed you here. Right. Uh, those are the things that he brought with him. Um, you know, there comes a time when you realize you're not going to live forever. I guess first and foremost would be, would be language. Uh, to be able to, to speak the Ukrainian language, to, uh, to, um, uh, to read the Ukrainian language and so forth. Uh, and to, to have the, uh, the interesting situation that I think everybody who's born in Canada who goes to Ukraine realizes at some point or other in time uh, that there is a phenomenal amount of Russian spoken in Ukraine and uh, as somebody growing up, I didn't hear Russian being spoken, um, although clearly they could all speak Russian extremely well, but it just wasn't a language that was used. Um, so I think that, that was the first thing that was passed down. The second thing that was passed down uh, was, was the religion. Uh, you know, we have a, uh, uh, we're Eastern uh, Rite uh, uh, Orthodox, and uh, there are, a number of different little things that you you have with that uh, that are unique and differentiate uh, uh, you from the run-of-the-mill person in Canada. Uh, for example, we we adhere to the the old calendar, so we have Christmas 13 days later. Uh, we have uh, Easter at uh, the, the week after Passover. We have uh, the uh, the various religious days happening on on different days uh, than than the usual people do, and uh, we've had, uh, for example, our uh, our kids have gotten married, and one of the things that you have to explain to people is that you uh, you cross yourself differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that has been passed down. As people get older, uh, one of the common things that people do, and whether it's in Canada or in a different culture, uh, is people write their memoirs. Right. And uh, uh, my grandfather did do that. Uh, they're, they're not the sort of memoirs that would be suitable for publication. They're uh, a bit rambling as the you know, boy growing up in, uh, in a town and uh, getting older and discovering the, the issues of uh, adolescence and so forth. Uh, nice stories, but not, not unique. I think that if you, uh, if you took a look at uh, most stories, they, it would be the this, this, this same sort of theme that goes through it. Um, but, but not, not particularly unique. Uh, again, um, growing up in uh, you know in the in the fifties and sixties, if we go back to those years, that was the time of the Cold War. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of potentially uh, uh, worrisome information that was was shared with the children. Mm -hmm. uh, that that just not, was not information that was shared. That was something that was both left behind, and people made the decision that they had come to Canada, and uh, and that was that. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, none of the the four people that came from Ukraine ever went back. Interesting. Uh, they they did not. 
he was a disciplined person. Uh, he would have a regimen, and his regimen would not be easily upset. So if he was, uh, you know, he would get up at what I looked at that time as an ungodly hour, you know, 5.30 or 6 in the morning, uh, have breakfast, and then start working on, on what he was writing, whether it would be a presentation for some place, or whether it would be uh, writing, doing some of his research, or, or anything else. Um, if he was going to have time that he was going to spend uh, with the family, or with the kids, it would be at a prescribed time. So, you know, it would be, we come home from school at 3 30, 4 o'clock, whatever. Uh, then there would be perhaps an hour to spend some time doing something. Most often in the winter, it would be, you know, reading a book in Ukrainian on Notaras Bulba or something else. Mm -hmm. uh, if, um, uh, if we were at the cottage, there would be more time to, and in the summer, but again, his, his point was that you didn't um, spend your time, uh, you didn't waste your time, as he would put it. So what you would do is, uh, and again, going back to the 60s, we, we didn't have very many television channels. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't have very much to watch on television, but you know, he would push a project that this, this summer we're going to collect bugs and we're going to mount them and we're going to read about them and we're going to see why these bugs are here and who they're related to, and in the, um, or we're going to collect leaves and mm -hmm. twigs and whatever it is and, and see what, what the story is. But the, the, there was a pattern to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then on Sundays, invariably, uh, my grandfather's case, he would be off somewhere at some sort of meeting, and invariably he would bring somebody home either for lunch or, mm -hmm. or supper, and, uh, and then there would be a, a crowd at lunch or supper. But again, for a ten-year-old boy, that that's really not very exciting. Right. Uh, these people are not there because of a ten-year-old boy. Well, you know, there there are these quintessential Ukrainian books right. that uh, are really hard to understand from the um, Canadian background. Right. And if you look at Taras Bulba, if you look at Sakhar Berkut. These are hard books for a 10-year-old kid to read right. and, and relate to, to what's going on. Um, uh, and the vocabulary is, uh, is, is really challenging, you know, yes. it's, uh, um, you know, and the, the, the locations are challenging. Mm -hmm. When you start talking about Bessarabia and you talk about places that don't appear on the map, you, it's very difficult to, uh, to, to place that in the Canadian context. But those are the sort of things that that that, that, that would happen around the house. You know, right. we sit down and, and read these things. Well, you know, life changes as you get older. Um, uh, you um, you go to university. Um, you are in a different stage of your life mm -hmm. as you go through. Uh, I think that um, for. Uh, for both my sister and myself, uh, as you hit sort of the early to mid twenties, mm -hmm. you have to, or you, or you had to, using the past tense, you have to decide where the the Ukrainian element fits in for you, um, and uh, how much of a role is it going to play in your life. Um, so at that point, uh, you know, you, uh, not unusual to have people pull back. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then not do, do, uh, delve into that to that same degree. But as you you get children, you may decide that that's something that you may want to to encourage again. So um, um, you know, at the current time, um, do I sit down and read uh, Ukrainian novels? Mm -hmm. The answer would be no. But I also don't read any novels in any case. <laughs> because I have a certain amount of professional reading I have to do. Uh, we're getting into September. Uh, they're going to have to be talks to give into the, the interns and residents. I'm a physician, so I have to, to brush up on that and mm -hmm. freshen it up. Um, and then there's all the aspects involved with work. So, um, uh, you know, I think that right now 
I'm fortunate that my wife is very interested mm -hmm. in, in Ukrainian activities and is doing a number of, of things that keep me very much up to date as to what's, what's happening and what's mm -hmm. what. Well, you know, you, you have to make your choices. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we, uh, one of the choices you have to make is you have to decide what kind of spouse you want. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to decide where you want to live. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, uh, Toronto is a, is a very vibrant city. It, it's changing, everything mm -hmm. changes everywhere. But uh, it's a city where uh, the fact that it has a um, a vibrant Ukrainian culture was a was an important point in us deciding to uh, to come back to Toronto. I was born in Toronto. Right. I did University of Toronto mm -hmm. uh, for arts and science, and then I did uh, uh, medical school in Toronto. And uh, then for for internship, I went to uh, not internship but residency. I went to to Montreal ah. to McGill, which was a phenomenal place to be. It was very exciting. Yes. Uh, it's a much more vibrant city than Toronto. At that time, yes. Uh, well, I haven't been there for, mm -hmm. for a while, but it's, it's a very exciting city. And after, and what I realized as we were, because we, we got married when we were in Montreal, uh, we realized that our French is just not as good as it could be. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm speaking to you easily in English, mm -hmm. but if we had to do this in French, it would be a, a bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, and as things changed in Montreal, it wasn't uh, uh, really where we wanted to be. So we, uh, I took a position at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, oh, wow. and uh, went out to the University of Alberta. And uh, then, as uh, uh, at that time, that's an academic position mm -hmm. in an academic institution. And uh, if you remember Canada of 1982-1983. Uh, the current Prime Minister's dad brought about uh, the National Energy Program mm -hmm. and uh, Alberta really took a hit, just like it's taking a hit now. And uh, there weren't going to be a whole lot of promotions for the next five or six years. Mm -hmm. So you then had to decide, well, what are your priorities? Where do you want to live? Um, doctors were going to the States. Doctors were uh, you know, going to, to various places. But Toronto was a pretty good place to live. Mm -hmm. So we, we chose to come back to Toronto and I can't say I've regretted that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the thing that's, that's interesting is to to step back and look at these people. And, uh, and you can step back and look at your life and uh, whatever. Uh, how decisions were made and what decisions they made and how some of the decisions that you make uh, really are irrevocable, or you may feel that they're irrevocable, but they may not be 20 years down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that the people that decided to, uh, to, to immigrate from, from Ukraine, and I would say, uh, certainly in my, my grandparents' uh, case, uh, you know, in the 30s, uh, they had a pretty, pretty good life. They had a, a nice house, nice jobs. They were traveling around Soviet Ukraine, educating teachers. This is what they wanted to do for a living. This is what they had, they had achieved, what they wanted to achieve. Um, and then they had to make this decision that they were going to go out there and start something new when they were you know, in, uh, in their middle years, if you would. Mm -hmm. And that was an irrevocable decision. And they treated it as such. They came to Canada and uh, they left that there and they stayed with yes, but I, and I think we all make those decisions in our life. You know, you decide uh, if and who you're going to marry, that's an important decision. Decide where you're going to live and what kind of work you're going to do. And uh, there are some people that mope about all the things that they uh, should have done, mm -hmm. but I think that most people who came over from that time uh, to Canada, they, they had a, uh, uh, some degree of unhappiness that mm -hmm. they had, to, they had to leave Ukraine, uh, but they were happy with their choices because they, they saw what Ukraine had become. Uh, 
uh, and uh, and they were able to to move on with that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that factored into anything. Okay. They, they were striving to get established. Mm -hmm. uh, they were striving to, uh, to get the professional qualifications, especially my parents' professional qualifications, mm -hmm. in a new language. They'd gone through this before. They had done it, you know, uh, Kiev University was in, in Russian. My mother took uh, medical school for two years in, in Russian in, in Kiev. Um, then she did medical school in Germany, so this was a, a different language um, in, in German. Um, and then she came to Canada and she had to repeat the stuff in, uh, in English. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that, that's, a, that's a reasonable challenge. Yes, it uh, is. So you look forward and you, you don't look back and you move ahead and you, you build for the future. I think that's, that was the, and many people from that generation I think had that that mindset. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in medicine, you, you do a lot of things that you really don't want to do. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons we bought this house is that I work at a hospital about five blocks away. Right. And I don't think anybody really looks forward to getting a call at 3.30 in the morning yes. to go and see a sick patient. Uh, that's just not exciting. And as you get older, it becomes less exciting. Mm -hmm. But it's what has to be done. That's what you do for a living. So that's the responsibility that you have. So that's the, you, you set yourself up for that. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't buy a house far away and you keep two cars ready and you, mm -hmm. whatever happens, you're going to make that, that run. Whether you like, to, mm -hmm. like it or not, you're going to do that. So I think that's, that's part of life. Mm -hmm. That, that's really hard to say. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that in his case, um, the professional standing that he had in Ukraine, the professional uh, acknowledgement of society was not something he was going to get in Canadian society. In mainstream Canadian society, he wasn't going to get all the, the accolades. So he got a lot of personal satisfaction out of being able to do things that that he was able to do well, mm -hmm. and he knew how to do them. He had the, the connections and the pathways to get it done. Um, so that becomes a win-win situation. You know, he gets something out of it, and society gets something yes. out of it. Yes. Uh, so that, that's a win-win.